The true question for clinicians, it's not what is the correlation between levodopa and the occurrence of motor complications. It's to know a little bit how can we use levodopa in a way that, you know, we are benefiting our patients. And in the past years, uh, this association between levodopa, its use and the occurrence of early motor complications being wearing off or dyskinesia, it's something that, you know, concerns a lot the physicians. So what we know now, it's not just levodopa that it's causing the occurrence of motor complication. Is, is it true that if we use high doses of levodopa, uh, patients have a higher risk of an early onset of dyskinesia and motor complications? But now we know with more precision exactly that if we use lower doses, that risk is lower. But also more important than to blaming levodopa, what we know now is that it's the progression of the disease itself that puts patients in risk of having early occurrence of motor complications. So clearly we know now better uh, how to play with levodopa. Levodopa is still the drug that we have available that has the highest benefit and it's the most safest one. So we cannot just not use levodopa, but if you use it well, clearly we are not in some way putting the patients in a higher risk of developing motor complications. Again, the first point is what we define as motor uh, fluctuations. So, motor fluctuations, when we look to the studies that we have available, it's trying to reduce off time, that it's something that really, you know, is troublesome for the patients. Uh, it's very interesting, even from the presentation that I have prepared, that, you know, patients with six, seven years of disease duration, they have around six hours of off time. Off time means being blocked, being unable to walk, you know, complaining about symptoms like pain, anxiety, uh, low mood. So it, it's many things that clearly it's not good for patients. So what we know now is that there are many drugs, including COMT inhibitors, that are able to reduce the duration of those bad moments. So if, if a patient that I'm following has six hours of off time a day, what we know from the trials that we have conducted with the COMT inhibitors is that we are able, for instance, with opicapone, to reduce that off time of about two hours. One hour, it's not uh, an immediate effect of the opicapone, it's what we call the placebo effect, but in, in practice, what patients will report is that those four hours will be reduced in terms of two hours. So uh, I think it's even for the lay people, it's very easy to understand that how relevant it is to reduce those moments where patients will feel a lot of discomfort. It's a very relevant question, uh, and, and, and first, first, my first comment is because we have treatments that are really efficacious, uh, we don't know anymore with high detail how the disease progresses. So what we know now is how the disease progresses in patients that are already being treated, and this is good because this means that Parkinson, fortunately, uh, is a disease for which we have many tra treatments available that really induce a benefit. Uh, you know, again, discussing the treatment of motor com complications and, and wearing off, no one questions and a patient with four hours of off merits to be treated and we should do it in a, in a very efficient way. The question is if we should start treatment early. Uh, uh, and in fact, there is a dissociation between the perception that clinicians have in terms of the, the duration of those off moments or those bad moments. So my first comment is, if we don't look, if we don't ask the patients when they are blocked, when they are not well, we will not find it. They will not describe it spontaneously. So that's the message. Clearly, we need to be very clear and precise and demanding on asking about what's the worst moment of the day for the patient, when they are good, when they are bad. The other thing, if we believe, and there is data already supporting that, that if we treat patients better, they will be better in the long term. This means that we may probably benefit from starting treating off and wearing off early. Meaning, uh, when a patient just reports that in the morning is slightly less well, probably, instead of saying, mm, this does not matter, probably the best approach may be, let's treat it. We have medications that are efficacious to treat it. So even if it's not yet very severe, there may be a benefit to start treating early because in the long run, this will be uh, in the good direction for the patient. So what I'm saying now is let's treat what we classically define as wearing off, off moments, but probably let's be more proactively asking the patients, the caregivers, the family, the relatives, 
when the patient is not feeling well and probably it merits to be more aggressive in that approach. And we have medicines already to do that in simple terms with easy therapeutic schemas, so it's not complicated.